Good evening. You can fit so much spaghetti in this video as well. Welcome back to Curiosity Forge. I am the Curiosity in the Forge, and today I have a treat for you. I planned on getting out to the forge and working, but this has been a bear of a week, and propane supplies are very low. So, we're going to check out another funky, interesting uh, knife from a long time ago in my life. But first, um, one thing that I have been doing since the, the interest in pocket knives has been rekindled is go down and start digging into my uncle's box of old knives from before he passed away. And one of them that I found was this Gerber pair frame that was missing all three of the screws to hold the frame together. And uh, if you have a problem like that, all you have to do is go to Gerber Gear's uh, webpage, find the warranty claim, and uh, make a parts request, and they'll send it to you pretty much right away. Uh, this got here like four days after I submitted it, and unfortunately, I think they packed up the wrong screws, or I ordered screws for the wrong knife. I'm not sure what happened, but the heads on these were a hair too big around, they were a hair too short, and the spacers were a hair too tall. So I spent about three hours down here with the Dremel tool <laughs> reshaping everything, and you can see right here. I had to take the cutoff wheel and put a notch in it for a flathead screw because the Allen wrench that fit these two was too big for this one. And I don't understand how that was possible. And I don't care because they sent me the parts I needed to get this thing back to functional again. And this thing has obviously seen better days. It has been put through its paces. But it works. It's carryable. The only problem is, like... When my uncle had beater knives, they were true beaters, so <laughs> there's a, a lot of things bent and uh, need some attention. I don't really have a good way to fix the back and forward blade play in this, and I don't care. That's not the point. I can carry this and use it now, and I can carry one of his knives. So, you know, that's a good feeling, and I put it back in service. And I've also been playing with my sharpening gear, trying to figure out the best way to get stuff sharpened. and. The work sharp was pretty good. I can get a good edge with that. The whetstone, not so much. Um, I didn't try the diamond block that I have, but the best edge I've got is I just went out to the 2x72 with 800 grit, zipped over the edge and got everything nice and clean, and then took it over to the buffing wheel with the white uh, jeweler's rogue and went nuts on it. And that thing, uh, the entire back of this hand is bald instead of closer to that the camera won't pick up the uh, amount of hair that's on there but it's quite a bit so uh yeah thankfully it's not something people notice but um i got like one of the old no-name brand knives sharp enough to shave easily with which felt pretty good because i don't get an edge like that that often i still have some learning to do there especially if i'm going to be checking out more and more knives because i do want to get to the point where i start doing abusive testing and seeing how well they hold an edge and all that become more knowledgeable instead of just showing how they look, how they function, and what to expect. Um, but what we're going to take a look at today is a knife that looks very innocuous until you turn it around. And this is the Camillus Lever Lock. And I bought my first one of these somewhere around 2001 or 2002. I was at, I think, uh... I was at one of the malls around here, and uh, I saw this, and I saw that it was Camillus, which I didn't know, but I saw New York, USA, and the demo they had, I picked it up and played with it, fell in love instantly, spent 40 bucks on it, which at that time was a huge sum of money for me, because I was making like $11 an hour and trying to take care of a, <laughs> um, a household, basically, on that. And I had it for a long time and it vanished and I don't know if someone stole it or I just left it in the house somewhere where I couldn't turn it up fast enough that I left in the divorce. But I had to order another one on Amazon for the same 40 bucks, which was still kind of hard because at that point I was still pretty broke. But uh, the reason I ordered this is because you want to open it. There you go. That little lever on the side opens and closes this blade. And uh, these guys, the older models like this, they seem to be commanding a fairly high premium on eBay right now. Uh, the prices have run from like 60 to 
think around $200 for one of them. And I don't entirely trust the asking price on eBay. I trust the, uh, unless there's a whole bunch that are about the same price. Um, and since eBay doesn't tell you what the sold for price is once they sell, I'm going to guess it's probably closer to the $60, $75 range, unless you have something truly rare. And this model has been replaced um, by a different one on Amazon that's about 20 bucks, 20 $21. And the 2021 dollar model, it looks different, but the blade specs on it look far more impressive than what this probably is. Because these are from like the, the 80s through the 90s, you can safely assume you've probably got 440C stainless, which again, not the best at edge retention. Not a bad pocket knife material, but you can do so much better, especially now, because as I mentioned before, more exotic steels have been being produced in far larger volumes and prices have been dropping on that. You're getting much better blade steel and much cheaper knives. And I trust the heat treatment was done well, all that, and the edge retention, because I carried this at work for quite a while, the edge retention wasn't bad. It took the abuse, and it, this one took a bit of a beating, and everything's still tight on it. I, I can press down on the lock back, and the blade doesn't swing freely. My old one did, but that's because I spent hours just doing this watching TV because this was so fascinating. Especially because like a legitimate switchblade and a full auto knife was impossible to buy at that point. They've come back fairly recently. I do plan on getting one of those because I believe Boker makes one that's like $36 uh, at Blade HQ. So I plan on adding that because at one point I had a bench made and the spring broke after about two years of abuse and when I found it it had been buried under a pile of leaves for no telling how long but back to this guy this is one of those where when you buy it you are buying the party trick you can you can EDC this knife and it will take care of you as well as most knives the only problem I've had is trying to put this in a pocket with uh, other stuff the space in between the blade and the lever right yeah that will get caught up on uh your key rings things like that pull them out with it and i've always had that nagging fear that if they get caught on the key ring just right and i try to pull it out of the pocket i'm going to snap the handle off i don't think that's actually going to happen but i've had bad luck with that uh in the past so i'm always a little bit shell-shocked and uh you know i worry about that sometimes more than i need to but that's the really the only gripe that i have about it is this gap right here makes it a little you got to be a little bit pickier about which pocket you stick it in and how you carry it i didn't carry this at work for as long as some of my other knives because i was scared of losing it again and because it took so long to find a listing where this was for sale again after the first one vanished, I didn't want to put myself through that again. But it did take some uh, some punishment. And you can kind of see where it has definitely been put through it. It's had a hot supper or two, to quote Arduino versus, Arduino versus Evil. And this has had the work sharp sharpening on it which the way I do it, we'll put a nice apple seed, ed on, apple seed edge on it and it'll take a lot of abuse. It'll stay sharp for as long as it can, but it's not the keenest edge possible. So the next time I do this, I'm gonna try the two by 72 and the, the buffing wheels. And I'll probably get a little bit more crazy with the buffing wheels and go through two or three of the compounds that I have. See what I can do with that. The, uh, the new one, I can't say anything about yet, but I do plan on buying one to check out later on. I will put a link to that one in the top comment and pin that there in case you want to check it out and buy one of your own. Um, I can't think of a whole lot else to add to this, but this has been a very, very interesting fun knife. And this is another one of those, hey man, check this out knives. I absolutely love how oddball this thing is you know i like i like weird stuff i love the weird opening systems and you can use it left-handed just fine um i am not left-hand dominant i should have been but 
Yeah, the Georgia public education system and my stepdad made sure that didn't happen. So the handwriting with this hand looks like a chicken scratched on more chicken scratch. Trying to avoid using profanity. So uh, yeah, you can left hand this one just fine. If that's your thing, if you swing that way. And, you know, it's, it's a very good, uh, good looking knife. This is uh, what I would consider a gentleman's knife. This is one of those that doesn't look too out of place if you're wearing a suit, you know, that kind of thing. You know, if you're wearing a suit and you pull this out for something, it doesn't look too out of place. If you're wearing a suit and you pull this out, however, <laughs> you might as well be wearing a camouflage party tuxedo at that point. Uh, if you catch my drift, the only thing that I would change about this, honestly, if I could, is I would put a deep carry pocket clip right here or right here. That way you can carry it and have it more accessible because if you carry pocket knives without clips, you know they fall down under everything and they take a while to fish out. I would put a pocket clip on this. And th that's it for this thing. Like I said, I'll put the link in, I'll pin the link in the top comment. So if you want to check it out, you're more than welcome to. I am planning on getting one of those so I can carry it for a while, play with it, cut with it, compare it to this one and see what the changes are. I know the blade steel on that one's going to be so much better. Like it's something like titanium nitride coated, uh, something. Not an expensive steel by today's standards, but had this been back when this was made, that would be top of the line cutting edge. You have to be involved in the cold war to get all of this stuff. So that's what I have for this. Y'all have a good night. Thank you so much for watching. And praise the forge and pass the borax. Please, for the love of God, stay safe when you're in your shops. I do plan on coming back in with another forging video very soon. I do have the Damascus that I made with Ting Ting at his place. I have something I want to do with that. And as soon as I have enough propane for it, I plan on starting work on my first hammer because I have the punch, I have the drift, and I have had my hands on the process of making one before, so I have some idea what I'm doing. I think my odds are decent that I can come out of there with a functional intact hammer. And if I do, that's going to be great. That's on one of my, uh, that's one of my bucket list items. Get to where I can make a hammer, and if I can get the whole, get the hang of making a Damascus billet big enough in my forge at home by hand, then I do plan on making my own Damascus hammerhead. That is going to be, if I make the Damascus hammerhead, that's going to be a big, big, big deal. Um, I cannot stress how big of a deal that's going to be for me. But with that, I am out. Thank you so much.